Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter here for the next 20 minutes. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, running a directory in Church Windows and membership and then we're also going to look at the different templates that are available for you um, as well as how to customize those directory templates to um, get the directory look that, that you're needing from the program. Um, Jen is signed in with me today. There were over 100 people that registered for today's webinar, which is awesome. Um, so lots of people today. So if you do have a question, uh, try to wait till the end if you could and ask it then. Um, because it might be something that I will cover. So, and please, please try to keep them topical. If it's something really specific to like a layout that you're wanting for a directory, um, or it's specific to your set of data, or it's off topic from the directory customizing, um, just call us or shoot us an email to support at churchwindows.com. That's gonna be a better atmosphere for us to be able to help you. Um, but like I said, please feel free to expand that question section on your GoToWebinar toolbar. Type in your question that you have as long as it pertains and it's not too specific uh, to what we're talking about today and we'll do our best to either general answer you or I'll read it at the end and answer it out loud if I think it'll be helpful for other people. Um, also, this webinar is getting recorded. So if you know somebody that you want to share this with, um, by the end of day today, at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, it's going to be up on the website at churchwindows.com within our support center. Uh, please, please check out our support center. There's a lot of really good information out there. All of our previously done webinars are recorded and available up there to watch at any time. So the topic today is from one of our workbooks. It's specifically from our M204 or our Membership 204 workbook, uh, and it's pages 23 through 25. Um, if you don't have that workbook, you can always head out to our website um, and purchase it if you'd like. Um, up here at the top under Beginning, you can go to Training Workbooks, and this is going to show you um, all of the workbooks that we have available for you to buy. And like I said, today's from M204, uh, pages 23 through 25. So feel free to follow along if you'd like. All right, as you can see too, we're working in version 21.18.4. As of this moment, that is the most current version available. Version 22 is gonna be ready here very soon, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but like I said, today we're gonna be in 21.18.4. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up membership. And I'm gonna go into people first. There's a couple things I wanna point out that are really, really, really important that you have updated before you go to run a church directory, okay? So I'm opening up people, and I wanna grab my highlighter real quick and show you these two fields. Um, it's in individual fields. It is called include on directory and directory report order. Um, these fields, have to be filled out or have to be updated for every record that you have in the program, depending on if you want them in your directory or not, okay? So first things first, the include on directory field. If you have someone that you want to appear when you run a directory, this box has to have a check mark in it, okay? If this box is not checked, this person, Nina, is not going to show up in your directory when you go to run it, okay? This with special character field, you do not have to fill this in. This is an optional field. Uh, this would be if you have a special character that you want to print next to someone's name when you run the directory. So say you want to put an asterisk in to note people who are on church council or something to that effect. Um, you could put a character in there and that character would then appear when you run your church directory. But like I said, you don't want to do anything with that. Just keep it blank. If you don't want someone to appear on the directory, pretty simple, leave the box unchecked, okay? 
below that, you have a directory report order field. Um, this has to be filled out for everyone, regardless of whether you have them printing on the directory or not. This field really tells the program who's who within their family and how they need to be listed on reports. Okay, so every family needs to have a primary. Since Nina is the only person in her family, she's going to be the primary. But as you can see, there are other codes you can fill in. So if Nina had a spouse, their spouse would be secondary. If they have kids, their kids would be the number three child with family. Secondary, primary, separately, that would be used if you have a couple that has two different last names and you want them to appear in both places alphabetically when you go to run the directory. You would have one person would be the primary, then their spouse or partner would be the four. And then five would be if you have an adult child living in the family and they want to have their own grouping when you run the directory, you could give them a five. Uh, another good example is if someone's elderly parent comes to live with them, um, but they still want to be listed separately in the directory, that um, adult parent could then get a number five and they would be listed as their own entity when you run the directory. Okay, so that's just a quick overview on include on directory, directory report order. There is more information in our membership 101 workbook if you need it, but that's just a quick overview to show you the two very important fields when you go to run your directory in church windows. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase my drawings here, and then let's jump into actually generating a directory. Um, two places you can go to get to reports directory. You can go right here in the middle of your screen, or you can go up here to reports and export, reports and labels, reports directory export. Both buttons are going to take you to your step one screen. Step one screen is where you set who you want to have on your report. Okay. Now, keep in mind, when you run a directory, it's only going to pull those people that have an include on directory set to yes. You do not have to re-enter that criteria here on step one. I know a lot of people think they need to put it in on step one. You do not, okay? If you put it in, it's not going to mess you up, but it's an extra step that you aren't required to do. The program will automatically only pull those people with the check, okay? Now, you might have some other criteria that you do want to put in. Say when you run your directory, you only want people who have a status code of active. Uh, feel free to put in those extra pieces of criteria that you need if you need them. But a lot of times you don't have to put anything in here on step one because the program's only going to look at those people who have include on directory checked. Okay. Over here on the right, you might want to uncheck visitors. It's an optional thing. Sometimes people want visitors to show up on the directory as long as they have that um, include on directory box checked. Sometimes you don't want to see visitors at all. Simply come in and uncheck that box there. Okay. Also make sure down here these are unchecked. Membership groups, donations, individuals, and donations group givers. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, you aren't going to want anything checked here. If you do, then you probably have a very specific reason for checking it and you know why you need it checked, okay? Um, but leave those unchecked. Then if we go up to the giving pledging tab, this allows you to put giving criteria in. Most likely, again, you're not going to need to use this tab or the accounts tab when running a church directory because it usually doesn't pertain to giving, okay? This last tab, very, very, very important tab, no matter what report you are running within our program, this is the sort tab. This is where you set what order you want these people to print out in, okay? Again, majority of the time, you're going to want people in your directory in alphabetical order so that people can be located easily, okay? So sort field one, we're going to leave that on name, last, first, alphabetical, then sort field two and three are typically set to none. Okay. Once you have all this set, down here at the bottom right, you're going to hit next, and this is going to take you to step two. So this is where a lot of the customizing um, is going to happen when you run a church directory. Something I want to point out to you real quick. When I'm on basic up here in the top left, basic pulls everyone you have that meets the criteria on step one. Okay, and you can see we have a good amount of names here. Now, when I switch it to directory, my names of people are going to change because it's only going to pull those people that are set to have that check mark in include on directory. So as I click it, 
my list has now updated and it's only pulling those people, okay? So that's where the change happens here on step two. All right, after you choose directory, right below that you have a Dropbox. We have a bunch of templates in here that you can choose from. So you don't have to make your directory from scratch. You, a lot of people like to use one of our templates that the programmers have set up based on what people seem to use most often. And then from that template, you can go in and customize it and get the layout or the features or the fonts, what have you, that you want. Okay. So we are on page 24 if you're following along. I want to show you, I take a lot of membership calls, so I want to show you the two that seem to be the most popular, and then I'm going to show you a third one that includes emails and cell phones, because that seems to be a pretty popular one as well. Uh, so up here at the top, next to template, I'm going to choose two column classic directory, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit the print button so you guys can see what that looks like. Pretty basic directory. It's going to give you the last name listed first. It's going to give you the primary and the secondaries first name up at the top. If we could get this to load, here we go. Last name, first name. If it's a couple, it's going to put that, their names together. It's going to give you their address and it's going to give you their primary phone number. Okay, let me zoom in a couple. If they have kids, over here if we look at the Knox family, kids are listed here, Nate and Judith, there's a semicolon separating the names. You do have the option to change that to a comma. I'll show you where that is in a second, um, but that's just the default. If anyone has an alternate address, it's going to list the time frame they are at that alternate address, and then below that it's going to list what the alternate address is. Okay, That is the two-column directory. This is one of our most populars. Pretty, pretty straight cut, gives you all your basic information, okay? Let's go back down here. There's a lot of other ones here you can pick from. These, I'm just going to focus on these two for now. Three column classic directory. This is another popular one. The layout, or, or I should say the fields are the same as the two column, except it's now squeezed into three, save you some paper, but the information is the same, okay? two pretty popular ones. Now let's talk about some report options you have over here on the right. Um, you can uppercase the last name if you wish. So if you want the person's last name to kind of jump out at you a little bit more, check that box and now we see last names in all caps. Um, you can also include additional family members linked from other households. So we have a feature that allows you to link a child to more than one household. If their parents are living in two different places, the kid can be linked to both. By checking this box, the kid will print on both parents' uh, fields when you go to run a directory. So mom, dad live in different places. Kid's name is going to show with the mom. Kid's name is also going to show with the dad. That's what that box means. Um, for family pictures, use individual individual picture if not available. If you're running a photo directory, that's when this will come into play. We're talking about photo directories tomorrow, um, but that's where you would check that box. Child delimiter for reporting. This is where I mentioned you could have a semicolon or a comma between. Default's going to be semicolon. If you want comma, change it to that. And instead of having a semicolon between your kids' names, you are simply going to have a comma right here between Stuart and Eric, okay? If you decide to include the year, uh, I'm sorry, your birth date, which we'll talk about in a minute on a directory layout, you can do that here by checking this box, or you can do it for only kids if you wish. Grouping and page break options tab. If you would like a page break on each person, you can check that box. Each individual family grouping is going to have its own section. Alphabetic page break, say you're going to be printing a directory and you want to put little tabs A through Z along the binder. I remember my church did that when I was, oh, years ago. But they had a little alphabet uh, listed along the side. You could go to the Bs, jump to that page. It's going to give you all the Bs. That's what that would do. And then you also have an alphabetic heading. You can include that. So up at the top, it would have an A. It would look like this. And then all the A's would be listed below to give you a little separation between the letter change. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this other directory. This one's getting pretty popular. This is the two-column directory with email and cell. 
Um, it also comes in a three column. If you would like to do the three column with email and cell, I find that if you're going to include an email address on your directory, uh, the two column is really better because some people have really long email addresses. Um, but of course, it's up to you. Uh, but for today's example, we're going to go ahead and talk about this two column directory with cell and email. As soon as I select that template, I'm going to get a little information box that's going to pop up and it's going to tell me something I need to do to be able to use that template. It says this template contains labels for cell phone. Please edit the report and drag membership field beside those labels and choose your cell phone field. Okay, so if this is a template you want to use. If you want to see the cell phone and the email, that's great. You can definitely use it, but you need to make a little adjustment to the layout before you can run it. And that's what this box is telling you. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit my little edit button. That is going to open up the report designer and it's going to allow me to go in and customize and make changes to my directory as I see fit. Okay. So here's the information where it's pulling last name, preferred name, kids' names. It's pulling the address, the primary phone. Here's my alternate address information. And then down here, this is what that box was telling me I need to update. So these fields listed along the left, these are personalized labels. So this field, line one here, is going to say, for example, Bob's cell. This is going to say Sally's cell because that's the secondary person in the family. This line will say Bob's email. This line will say Sally's email. Okay, that's why you have two of each. The first one's for the primary person. The second one's for the secondary person. Okay, so right now email is set up properly, but you do have to come in and set up your cell phone field. To do that, we're going to come over to the right, and I'm grabbing this membership field off to the right here. I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to drop it right here next to my cell phone field for my secondary person. You don't want it to overlap. If anything ever turns pink or red, that means something's overlapping, which is not a good thing. That means you have to scooch something around. Uh, but as soon as I let go of my mouse click, it's telling me to pick a membership field. So I have to tell the program what information I want printed in this membership field. So I need to look for my cell phone field. I'm going to select cell phone, and I'm going to say OK. And now I have my cell phone listed here. Now if you see, it says cell phone for selected individual. Anytime you bring a field over, it's always going to default to the selected individual, which is your primary person. But this is my secondary line, so I have to change this to tell it I want the cell phone for my spouse to print. So I'm going to hit this little right-facing arrow. This opens up my label tasks. In here, next to family member, I'm going to change this to spouse partner of individual so it knows, in our example, to print Sally's cell phone. Okay? We're going to repeat the same process for our primary person. Over here to the right, I'm grabbing my membership field again. I'm dragging it over. I'm dropping it right here. I need to tell it what field I want. It's already selected cell phone for me. I remembered what I picked last time. I'm going to say OK. And now I have cell phone for selected individual, which is exactly what I want, so we don't need to change the family member for this line. OK. Now, let's talk about omitting fields. So the next thing we have to do is tell the program, if Sally or Bob don't have a cell phone, I don't need to see the text Bob's cell phone and then nothing printed after it. So we need to tell the program to omit that field if it doesn't exist. So down here, on we're going to start on our second cell phone line. We're going to select the personalized label because that's the text we want to hide. We want to hide Sally's cell if she doesn't have one. So we're selecting that field. We're hitting the right facing arrow. Our family member is already set to spouse partner of individual. That's perfect, but we need to adjust the omit. So we need to say omit if selected field is empty, and that's cell phone for spouse partner of individual. So if our spouse or partner doesn't have a cell phone, we want to omit it. That's what we're telling the program here. Same thing up here at the top. This is for our primary person, family member, selected individual. That's perfect. Omit if selected field is empty. We're choosing cell phone for selected individual. Okay. 
That's how you set up those fields so you can use this layout. Now keep in mind, there are a whole bunch of other fields you can add, and that can all be done over here with your membership field. If I drag and drop another membership field over, you can see on your screen now all of these different fields I have listed. If you want to include a status code, if you want to include a birthday, anniversary date, age, membership date, all of that stuff is going to be available for you here within your membership field that you drag over and drop. And you're going to set it up similar to how a cell phone or an email field is set up. You can use the personalized label, tell, the, tell it what it's going to be labeling. So if you drop a membership date field over, you create that personalized label that says Bob's membership date, just like we did over here with cell and email, and you can get that information to print. Another quick tip I want to show you, down here at the bottom, if you need to make more room, you just click and drag and you can scoop this down and place this wherever you like. If you have three more fields you want to add, you make some more room and you add those three fields right down here. And then you scooch this back up. The amount of space you leave here, this is the amount of space you're going to have listed between each family when you go to print a directory. Okay. So that covers how to set that up. Let's go ahead and save this. Up here in the top left, we're going to do a save as. we got to get rid of the word template. Program's not going to let us overwrite that. And I'll come over here and I'll just call it 2019. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to come up to the top right, hit the X to close. And now I'm back on step two. As you can see, here's my new name. No longer says template. I'm going to go ahead and hit print, and now I'm going to see a preview of my directory that I just set up. So anybody that has a cell phone or an email, it's then going to be listed down here below. All right. Here's a good example, too, with Evan and Nikki. You can see Evan has a cell, Nikki has a cell, and Evan has an email, but Nikki doesn't. So setting up those omit fields like we did is leaving out the words Nikki's email and then just having it blank. It just omits that whole line, save you some room. Okay. But any customizing that you might want to do, that's all going to be done back here within your edit. And like I said, if you have really specific questions on how to do things, definitely give us a call. We are, we are so happy to help you get your directory set up the way you want. Okay.